we will call the Board of Health meeting to order. Uh, oh, no one here. So chair report. I, you know, this is going to be pretty much all COVID. But uh, guess what? Flu still high level. So get your flu shot, please, please. Uh, and that's all I have for that. So health, <laughs> health agent report. 14 inspections, 10 re-inspections, um, two construction inspections, which were new locations or locations that closed down, only one complaint, and that complaint has been inspected and closed, no septic, no flu shots administered, MAVEN, um, I sent this out prior to, but then you got a separate email, but the MAVEN report is in there, and all we had was 48 cases of the flu. Uh, tobacco, those two violations from January were paid in full. Okay, good. So that's that's done. And then we issued 111 permits this in the month of February. Three food, zero septic, 17 dumpsters, one tobacco, and that's it. All right. COVID. COVID. <laughs> So, so uh, as, day. yeah, so a uh, state of emergency. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so, um, the town has been doing or just did the first one last week of this uh, sort of an emergency preparedness meeting. Who all is in that? It's the Emergency Operations Center that's yeah. been set up. And on the website, there's a uh, blurb about it. There's yeah. a separate button now for the coronavirus. Yeah. And we're meeting um, bi-weekly, and then probably we'll announce next week that we're going to ramp that up. Yeah. Um, it's everyone that in some way through our uh, continuity of operations plan is in some sort of a lead role. So obviously health, myself, um, we've extended to the Board of Health. And what we could do if the board is interested is we could just post you for all the meetings. Okay. And then that way, if others want to come, you can come. If you don't want to come, it's totally at your discretion if you want to jump in at any okay. point. Anybody yeah, no, can come. that sounds great. great. Thank you. Then we'll just post you. Then, you know, technically, um, under the open meeting law, this actually does qualify as an emergency. So. Yeah. Um, the town manager wanted me to let everyone know that if something does come up and you need to convene, don't worry about the open meeting law. Okay. Um, that uh, there's a built-in provision that allows this. Is, is that because Governor Baker declared a state of emergency, or is that just emergency? Just, in the ways? Yeah, just okay. because of the nature of the public health okay. matter. <clears throat> so we are free to email discussions. Is that? I wouldn't you say you're right? free to email and discuss and and you know, um, go beyond what what you normally do. But if something were to come up and you needed to we could meet get together. Oh, well, so okay. yeah, it has to be posted within 48 hours. So, you know, something comes up tomorrow and we need to meet, we can meet tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. But we should still send everything through Laura. Yeah. If you want I information would... out to all of us, send it through Laura to us okay. that way. Because that, that's kind of, if we do that, we're at least going to have a meeting and there's going to be minutes of it and stuff yeah. like that. If we're just emailing people, there's not really a a trail that the public can see yeah. um, easily, that is, that they can always request. If it was an extraordinary circumstance and something <clears throat> was going on and you needed to email, that'd be one thing. But where you can go through Laura and she can push it out that way, right. I, I prefer it that way. Okay. Um, so the next meeting <clears throat> of that is uh, next Monday yep. at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yep. in the police community. The community meeting room. So they, at the, com the community room at the police station has been set up as the EOC. So that's the Emergency Operations Center. I think it's been taken offline for all other purposes. And the chief and I are working on some um, other things to organize the room a little bit. So, Sorry, taken offline, does that mean it's not recorded? No, no, it's, it's not a, being used for other oh, purposes. Okay. Yeah, so it's a community meeting room that is now not a community meeting room. It's now an emergency operations center. 
So there's um, no other events. And will that those meetings be recorded? I can't go on Monday. And They're not recorded, not no. Recorded. So is there any way for us to find out what happened? I'll be there. Okay. I'll will, be there. Will you be able to like send a summary to yes. Laura? And then, thank you. <laughs> yes. Can I send your summary to everybody then? Yes. Um, so, um, I had met with Laura and Jean last week and raised um, a couple of concerns which were um, in the event that schools close, um, uh, how do we make sure that kids who are on the free subsidized school lunches are still getting fed? Um, and then for seniors who get food through the senior center in the event that we close the senior center, um, how are they going to get those meals and then um, rely on the food pantry? How are they also going to be provided for in the event that people are quarantined? Um, and we're sort of in the process of working through some of those issues. Yep. The, um, um, the, we're meeting with facilities tomorrow to go over a bunch of things. Yeah. Um, the food pantry, our outreach uh, coordinator has connected with them and she's meeting with them, I think, tomorrow. Yeah, I think she said tomorrow. I don't know if any, I can't go to that. I don't know if anyone's available, so that's at 1245. I don't know if anyone here is, would be available or interested. Um, yeah, it's, I, it's the last minute. <laughs> where is that going to be again? Where is, do you know where that one's going to be? Um, I got the E. This is the food pantry meeting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can try to, I'll be going into Boston tomorrow, but maybe I can be back by like one. Does not say where they're meeting, but that would be Carrie, who was the one who emailed about it. So if you guys, if there's contact information, I can email someone and see if I'm like allowed to come at one. Okay. Um, so I can try to make that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, so we'll just find out from Carrie where it is and uh, yeah. Yeah. Carrie. I'm looking at the email now. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, all I have here is they're having a meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Since you have it open, would you email her? <laughs> yeah, 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 Sorry. yeah, totally can do that. <laughs> I'm wondering if like Meals on Wheels already delivers here, if they can take extra, like pick up from the food pantry and drive right. things around. We were talking about that mm -hmm. for at least for the any of the senior yes. center. But I just don't know mm. the logistics of how all of that. That's that's all through Mystic Valley that Meals on Wheels gets delivered. Oh, okay. So my initial thought mm. would be that'd be a, a stretch for them. Okay. And um, I I would hold off on going to that step and let's see what the food pantry folks have to say tomorrow. And then we can take it from there. Okay. okay. It's the clergy association. Oh, that's. Okay. I assume it's at the food pantry, but um, that's that's yeah, a guess. I know. Yes, but it's not crystal clear. Is that in this church? Old South. 
which is pretty Old good. South. Right? Isn't that, isn't that Old, isn't South? Old South? In the town. Oh. Old South. Is it right there? Okay. The parking lot? Um. Is it time to get through to the parking lot you can get to? Mm, that's congregational, I think. Yeah. Old South is the white steeple. Oh, the oh. white, like in the town center? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I, well, you're pointing this way. I think you're pointing towards the the common, but maybe. Oh, am I? Okay. Well, across the common. <laughs> I feel like it's right more there. that way. <laughs> Next to the cemetery. Yeah. Okay. So, it, it looked like, uh, if I read this correctly, from earlier today, um, that 70 of these cases are from. Um, the Biogen the meeting. The Biogen meeting. Which is, I, I only say that because it, it makes me feel better that it's such a large, like, sorry for those folks, but it makes you feel better that there's such a large number of from one place and it's not mm -hmm. coming from all different so avenues into it. They've broken it down by county, and Middlesex County has a considerable portion. Oh, yeah, because they come, they yeah. came from everywhere, right? The Biogen employees live all over. Yeah. But there are up to, what, 92 uh, yeah, tested? Yeah. Positive. They're not. They're, they're not, not confirmed. Presumptive. They're, they're presumptive. They're presumptive okay. positives. They're not testing very many people yet. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of people in the hospitals who have not been tested or who are awaiting results because all of the tests still have to go through the state. Uh, it just takes a while, yeah. and the the state I think up until yesterday was only processing fifty tests a day. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, and then they send them to the CDC for and confirmation. Then, yeah, so. then they do that. But they do, they, they list, I mean, once they get the presumptive positive, they treat it as if that is. Sure. So are we supposed to order test kits? I have a feeling that we will not be able to get them for a long time, but we, we don't order We don't them. do testing. No. We don't do testing. That right. goes all through. All through the hospital, so we just. The hospitals and okay. doctors. Um, so I know that at least. BI is, um, they're going to be uh, contracting with a private lab, uh, and I think they're hoping to have that established by the end of the week, uh, which means that they should have, uh, you know, much more capacity for testing, and that's when we'll sort of see more of the numbers. They targeted the bio, once they with the Twitch, yeah. they actually, I mean, I got an email at work saying, um, Shaddock Street is going to be closed because 60 people are coming in for testing. And then that was that, and, and that's what we're sort of seeing now. Um, and that's what set off all the alarms. It yeah. seems like, from, the, from at least the governor declaring a state emergency. What was that, they, were they coming before that? <laughs> Uh, no, so they had, well, they had gotten, I assume they had gotten some of the results the day before, but I think with, just with the fact that there are people in so many different counties who have tested positive, it's, containment's going to be very hard. But it's also not just volume that... They need the money. They, they need, need the, money and they need resources and they yeah. need certain regulatory, like, yeah. authority right. to just do to stuff and get it done. Right. So it's, like, yes, the volume is high, but yeah. there's but they other need, functional right. things yes. that a state of emergency, like, oh, allows. Um, yeah. 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 It allows you to be a lot more nimble. Yeah. <laughs> I do think we'll see a lot more. The sense that I'm getting is it's definitely circulating. So do so. we, um, where do we get our directions? Like how do I we know, know when we're supposed to close this school if that's supposed to happen or you know what I mean? So um, the state can pri provide direction, but we, we can also, I mean, local health departments, uh, have a lot of latitude in how we want to deal with situations, emerging situations. It's an interesting question. Um, and it's a hard, it's... it's Sound, super sounds like a likely. town council question to see how much, oh, no, we can how much latitude that. we have. Oh, we have all of the latitude. Okay. But does that mean we have all of the 
decision making responsibility like we need to be calling a meeting every day and talking about I mean I feel like you guys tell us so much information like when the website we're posting to the website you post and then let us know so I don't I'm also asking kind of how do we how move forward that? is it like we're meeting and giving you ideas and you're, or you're posting and telling us things do you know what I mean um yeah <laughs> so it's sort of like how much involvement do we have to have versus Laura doing it independently. Right, and whatever. And whatever, you know, I mean, they're having the emergency operations center and all those meetings. Mm -hmm. so like, I, where are we getting our directions about next the, steps? Anytime there's a major emergency, the fire chief is the incident command officer. Okay. So the fire chief heads, whether it's an oil spill uh, a vehicle, a major car accident, uh, an earthquake, a flood, a drought, or, or a major outbreak of some kind. Okay. Um, the fire chief, we have what's called a continuity of operations plan, and under that, that fire chief uh, is the lead okay. and an incident command officer. And um, that's where the EOC got established, and that's how everything got kind of put in place. Okay. So do we offer up suggestions to sure. him? Or? Yeah. Okay. Not to okay. him. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to come to the Laura. meetings. Uh, we're meeting here tonight to have discussion about anything that the board wants to act on. Um, the Tom manager told me that he's all ears for what the Board of Health wants and happy to help out. However, so and I can pass the information around, but Jean is actually the division head, so I would, she would make the final call, right? If we were well, going to close something down? You mean the department head? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what the Board of Health probably wants to be thinking about is what kinds of things should we be planning ahead for? Okay. in advance of the meeting on yeah. Monday. Is there anything that we should be doing to have the, the EOC meeting on Monday a little bit more productive? Right. I'll, I'll throw one thing out there that I've been working on, um, which is a calendar of all meetings and events. I've gone from the present out to June 30th and populated the calendar with anything and everything that I know about and working with, you know, all the other staff that I can muster up to help me put put dates in there. So now we have a really good picture of what events are being planned. And um, then I guess the next decision point would be, do we think about starting to cancel those events with 40 or more people likely to be in attendance? But if we were going to cancel those events or schools or ban people, that would come from you, right? No. I think schools would either come from the superintendent or us. And then this, I mean, really, I think we, we actually, as a board, can issue orders, public health orders, mm -hmm. for really anything. Mm -hmm. So we could issue a public health order to close the senior center. But so, it doesn't have to be us. I think town could also close the senior center as yep. well. But with the, so that's why with the schools, it's the superintendent or us. So let me ask a question. So today we had an individual who works at Biogen but wasn't at the conference, hasn't been in contact with anyone, and another person who went to India, India which isn't one of the areas. So. Who, may, who would make the final decision on if that those students were banned from school? Um, That's a great question. So, Thank you. <laughs> you know, and, a nice clear answer? Yeah. Anyone? <laughs> well, no, I mean, you, you, you don't, again, you'd assume the superintendent could make that call. Right. I, like I don't want to assume that. Obviously, we could make that call. We can also make that call. My question is, do it have to raise to us? Wouldn't wouldn't it be a superintendent be able to make that call? And that, that's a question that's more of a legal question that I don't know the answer to. In other words, where's the authority? 
stop with the superintendent's office for something like that. With us, we have the authority. Yeah, we definitely have the authority. Are you asking to, like, logistically, how does that happen? <laughs> Like, well, I think the, the reason I bring up the superintendent, typically with things like this where we you have volunteer boards that have that authority, but you also have staff that are dealing day in, day out of this. Yeah. You know, I, I've always said, you know, let the people that are do this on a day in, day out kind of do their thing and ask us and inform us, this is what we want to do, you know, are you, are you good with that? I think that's a better relationship than trying to force onto um, staff you know, what we want to do. They, you know, they're probably going to be a lot more reactive than we are. So can we clarify that relationship or what we want that to look like at the Monday meeting? Yeah, schools will be there, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. schools will um, definitely be there. This case, this wasn't a public school, right? Yeah. But just in general, but, so yeah. so we have a clear understanding. Right, because I sent out the oh, email to like a bunch yeah. of people and I just want to know the... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we would... I think, I think I think Emmy's response was, was policy right there. should yeah, yeah just I defer to the I, chair. So the policy it's very difficult because you don't really know. <laughs> but if you're gonna stick to one policy right now it seems that that policy should be if there's no symptoms, no known contact with an infected individual and no recent travel to a country listed in the CDC travel advisory, then we don't require them to self-quarantine. Which makes sense. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to know, like, who, instead of right, emailing 15 the, people and sure, waiting yeah. for everybody to respond, who's the one person I'm supposed to go to? Oh. Is it you? Is it Greg? Is it you? Well, the way you, you handled the inquiry, I think, was fine because fine. we had fire and we had the Board of Health chair. Whoever that, I'm like, do I wait for everybody to respond? Or no. Or just the first person. Just the first answer I get? <laughs> you, I think you got your answer. Well, the fire chief probably can't actually, I answered correctly, but probably actually can't make that order right. Right. So, in which case, maybe just go to me, or if it was in a public school, superintendent and me. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah, make it sound? Yeah, it's perfect sense. Reasonable. So, does that help to clarify the relationship? Is basically that Laura or someone <laughs> notifies you mm -hmm. and whatever the relevant authority is, like if it's a yeah. school, the superintendent. Yeah. And then that decision. If it's the town. Maybe we hope there's no disagreements. Yeah. That can be all jointly made. And if there's a disagreement, then we can issue, you can issue a public order. I guess we don't have to think about what if there's, if the police chief disagrees with Emmy, <laughs> he can deal with that as it arises. I mean, is that kind worst of so case scenario, I really? think at that point, we would, if it, we really can't come to an agreement, I think I would probably call right. an emergency meeting. Okay. If possible. Um, are we able to call um, an emergency meeting without a quorum in the room, in other words, um, through um, um, teleconference of some kind. If everybody can't get so into the room right away. Bob suggested that that I mean, first thing no. would be no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's what Bob told but me. But again, you know, Gene started off this meeting by saying, you know, on their emergency you know, readiness, things change a little bit. So do. that's why I'm asking the question under that guideline. My guess would be at that point, I'd rather be, um, I'd rather be in, uh, says open meeting I know Ray, you're going to hate me. I'd rather be in violation <laughs> and save lives yeah. than be out of violation, than, than be, yeah, yeah. you know, and doing the right thing Absolutely. from an no, open meeting standpoint why and I, costing I sort lives. I of had wondered if in an emergency situation, board members could just somehow talk. <laughs> <laughs> So Which that sounds is like a unfortunate that it's clunky, but because um, it's sometimes hard to get everybody in a room together last minute. 
Yeah, and that, maybe that's a good question for Monday as well. Well, like I said before, the town manager said, do not worry about the open meeting law if okay. something comes up. Okay, so worst case scenario. We'll just, yeah. We'll make sure everything gets tend to. Yep. In the timing. Then. Common sense over open yeah, meeting law. I agree. Okay. Um, what questions or concerns do people have? Like, looking forward, trying to poke holes in any, <laughs> or come up with any conceivable scenario. Are there things that you think we should be on top of? No, the only thing it's so it's hard. Such a day -to -day I know it's change. every day. Um, the obviously, having you know, from the standpoint of um, what Jim was talking about earlier, of all the events that we you know hold throughout town, I know town meeting. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that could bring this town to a halt from a meeting standpoint, um, which again needs to. It needs to obviously, you know, for, for better good. But I think that's one of the things we need to probably be most on top of if things start to escalate and volume wise uh, you know right now I, I feel like wash your hands people often a lot all day long to start with um, but if, if these numbers keep escalating that's a decision we're definitely gonna have to have in the back of our heads on on what and when to pull the trigger on some of these events I was wondering about, and I'm kind of brainstorming here because no, you said this is what good. can we possibly think about. So I was looking at the Wakefield Melrose um, report um, and just thinking about elders and how it's difficult to reach them here. And so I know we also have health education expertise. I don't know if yeah. there's some extra effort that we need to, and you mentioned too that we have close relationships with. Um, elderly populations. I'm just worried that the Council on Aging. Council yep. on Aging, thank you. Yep. Um, from what I know about COVID-19, it tends to be, it's not like the typical flu where toddlers and the elderly die at similar rates. This tends to be worse for the elderly. So that's why I was wondering about any extra outreach to that population, given that they are harder to be in communication with. We work with public safety, fire and police, and we have a database of fragile elders, frail elders, so that's something we do all the time. Um, and they actually work hand in glove, the three um, police, fire, and elder human services. So they're very much plugged in and collaborative. So that's, that's good. So do they? Um, Is there anything specific give about COVID? Email yeah. Updates or how might they? Most of the elders that are fragile aren't on email, right, so, so um, mm -hmm. the staff, you know, reaches out. Either goes to their home. They do wellness checks. The police and fire go out all the time and do wellness checks. Okay. So, I think we have a pretty good system in place for the fragile elders. Okay, so a wellness check. Yep. Happens. So, so well, let me rephrase that. We don't just all of a sudden go, oh, I think we'll do a wellness <laughs> check. We do a wellness check when we think there might be an issue. Okay. That's when we do a wellness check. So that's different than what you're thinking, I think it sounds like, right? Um, right. I mean, initially I was thinking, does there need to be some extra, like, we go to people's homes and hand them a document if they're not on email, if they tend to be at much higher risk. Can I have a bylaw committee meeting? Right next door. Um, I don't know. What, <laughs> if you're also thinking that? Or no, what? I think that, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's... How do you get the information directly to the population? Well, well I think that. it's knowing the population. Everyone's different. Some of these may be homebound seniors, yeah. so maybe there really isn't that much of a risk. Right, because they're not... They may be right. elders that are fragile, but they're still very active in the community, and they do need that extra education or supplemental assistance or getting with getting supplies or things like that so 
I'm not sure how targeted and tailored we want to be. I don't know how large that group is, um, but I think that's maybe if our so. idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe if there gets to be a certain, I don't know, level Threshold. of exposure that we think is present in Reading for the people who are act like leaving their home, able to leave their homes. Maybe we want to take you know, extra precautions with that. So, are you thinking we should draft something? I think we should do everything earlier than we think we right. need to do it. Right. That's true. No, so, I wasn't thinking that far, um, but yes. Draft something and then figure out what the appropriate mechanism is for getting it to these people, whether that's mailings, whether that's... Or maybe there's something with the Meals on Wheels program that they're already doing. They may be providing handouts or whatever with the meals when they deliver them. That's Mystic Valley. So they would, um, that's the Thursday meeting? Would they be there? Mystic Valley. No, no. Mystic Valley Elder Services is our food provider for the lunch program. They so do the Meals on Wheels. So just meals. check in with them and see if they're providing any. You could either, you're going to see Kerry tomorrow anyway, right? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I hope so. So, <laughs> if yeah. you're going to be meeting about the food pantry with Carrie, maybe that's a good time to ask about how are we communicating out to the frail elders about. Okay. There could be either between Mystic Valley or some other resource that there's something in place or there's something they're planning. If okay. not, then, then I think um, having some sort of information, maybe we could tuck it in with the Meals on Wheels yeah. and get people's attention that way. Do we have um, addresses, like for mailed information? Do you mean for Do the Meals on Wheels? That? For frail elders in Reading? That's what Carrie works on. Okay. Yep. Oh, okay. I thought she was specific to the food pantry. No, Carrie's the, she's um, the outreach worker. Yeah. Oh, got it. She's okay. a senior case worker, but right. she's an out outreach worker. Okay. Carrie oh, Valley. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie Valley and Elise Warren work very closely. Elise is a nurse and Carrie's a social worker. And this is what they do is working with the frail elders and elders that have special needs and such. Perfect. Thank so, you. I'm fairly sure they have a list because anytime we've had um, any other kind of emergency, whether it was a power outage or whatever, they had a list to go to. Oh, great. Um, this is something we started to talk about at sort of along the same lines uh, last week, I think it was, on um, the nursing homes or senior living. Group homes. Yeah. Um, can you reach out to them and just see what they're doing? See what they're doing. <laughs> see what they're doing, see if they need any help or direction. I, mean, I imagine that they have a relationship with the state. I imagine with nursing homes. I don't know what the group home situation. Right. Is. There are several in town, I believe. Yeah. I feel like maybe that group would need more guidance on nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Great. So. What kind of items? I huh? kind of just, uh, you know, if they have a plan in place for if someone residing there tests positive, what is their mitigation plan, I guess? Yeah, is there, I should know this, but is there somewhere like the Mass Department of Health or Emergency Preparedness of Mass where you can just download flyers? Like if I work in a nursing home, can I download a flyer that says what my mitigation plan should be? C might actually have. They are have really expanded their. Let's see here. 
what is that? Coronavirus.gov? Is that what it is now? Corona should be COVID. COVID Someone's got to find a new domain, apparently. Coronavirus. Okay. Um, information for specific audiences. Because <laughs> we could even link to that on our website. Like we do have some, but yeah, we don't have it specifically for right. those we have places. Info, right, we have mass yeah. department, but I'm wondering if we can link, like, plans. You know, like, if you're a nursing home, download this plan. If you're a school, download yeah. this plan. I mean, they may already have. I think have they have well. businesses, yeah. households, but they don't actually have. Carrie, are already working with the group homes and senior homes? Jean? Caregiver. I'm not sure. Maybe under I mean, she, she definitely gets a lot of her clients from um, a couple of the assisted living facilities, but the people that are participants at the Pleasant Street Center have to meet standards of independence. So if they're not of a certain level of those standards, then they're not going to be clients at the Pleasant Street Center. And my guess is most people in nursing homes don't meet that standard. But assisted living facilities are a little different. But like, for example, um, the memory care facility, they're not going to be able to come to the senior center because they're not going to meet the standards. Artists, senior living. Those, those Clients are memory care people, and so they're not going to be able to get on the van and go to the <clears throat> street center. Right. So is there something that we should make artists available, <laughs> like make available to artists, for example? I guess what I'm asking is, is there some health communication outreach that we should be thinking of doing? Broadly and ready. Other than what we've already done. Well, there's the guidance for businesses and employers. I don't know if that's. Well, there's, there's one on here too resources for healthcare facilities. So, and it's got steps they can take guidance for facilities, long term care, nursing homes. Would just be those five or facilities, which I don't think we have any of those. This would be the list that the state wanted the other day. Is there more of them? So the CDC does have a good amount of information for us. Um, it wouldn't be bad. I'm sure we have emails for all these facilities. So how can I get a copy of that list now? Email them. This particular I'm, one. I'm of the opinion. Page of stops for resource for healthcare facilities. The biggest one on here, which is the probably no brainer that they're doing already, is screening patients and visitors. Yeah. So I can't get a list of the group homes. Okay. EPA, I mean, uh, Ma Mass DMR and Even one of the other state agencies um, have told us that it's considered, um, not considered public information. Even in an emergency situation. Huh. That's okay then. Only because I ran, ran into this last week. The state was looking for a list right. and I was unable to. Oh, you provided a list. Just the ones that they got off the website. And then you said that the other people had the whole thing done. Did it with Sharpie and highlighters, but they made their own list of what they could get off the internet because we couldn't get a list. Just a list of we, yeah, we did. the group homes. We just went by the five that were on the... Or like sober living. That's a hot topic too. Oh. <laughs> So is there any way to get a list also, from the state? Like, I don't know. A lot of people. Yep. Yeah. But I don't think of that as a group home, but it's another type. And they're in, I didn't realize how many we had. I'm not yeah. sure if they're, but I know they're in surrounding towns. I'm not sure if they're in surrounding towns. I don't know. Okay. So. Um, hmm. okay. so I can only reach out to the nursing homes. Okay, so they're I mean, probably homes are regulated. They are heavily regulated. Right. So I don't know. 
maybe I'm being... How'd you get a phone book? I mean, just turn to that maybe page. Maybe I'm being like, really oh, naive, jealous. but I don't think a nursing home would look to the town for guidance. I would think they would look to the state or They're very federal. Heavy. Yeah, they're right. very heavy. That's not to say we can't do something, but I don't think it's like top priority. And maybe this is living are um, at greater risk. Oh, okay. So part of our hang up is not being able to know who to email. Right. <laughs> not being able to know what? Who to email. Um, if we want to well, push. I'm just pulling up artist senior living just to see. But Carrie might have a really good yeah, handle she's, on that too. Yeah. Uh, possibly <laughs> unpopular. Um, Sharing of information. <laughs> I've heard some businesses are no longer going to refill containers that are bought, brought in from home, such they've as coffee. Stopped. Yeah. Like reusable oh. coffee oh. containers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've all stopped doing that writing. Yeah. Oh. By their own choice, though. Yes. Yes. I can understand. I think it's gross to be doing this. <laughs> and that's temporary. I understand. Yeah. Our senior living is closely monitoring the outbreak of the coronavirus and is adhering to all recommendations from the okay, CDC. Yeah, I mean, there. Okay. So that's just one example. Yeah. This is something that is probably more for the EOC meeting, but I I'm, I know that there were issues in the Seattle area with first responders. They ended up changing how they were responding because what would happen is they'd send first responders in and then they would interact with someone who was symptomatic and then would test positive and then all those first responders would have to go into self-quarantine and that can go through your police or your fire department very quickly mm -hmm. you don't want them to all, to all be in self-quarantine. Um, and I think they changed their policy so that if there was anyone who was complaining <coughs> of symptoms, they would literally not go in until somebody came who was fully gowned. Uh, in PPE, so that might be a question to see if they've got a plan for. And that would be the Monday meeting response, such that they won't end up. Fire department, police department. Yeah. He did say, correct me if I'm wrong. He did say last time that they have hazmat suits and masks, and mm -hmm. they're protected. Sure. Yeah. So any any time somebody calls and it's a respiratory situation, they will not go in unless they've got the garb, <clears throat> the PPE, presumably. I would want to discuss that on Monday. For yeah. Sure. I can't believe I can't make this one. Yeah. There'll be more. Yeah. Uh, I think they they always Monday a lot more. Uh, we may switch. Oh, but you go to all. So uh, I'm going. Uh, this I'll be going to this one, and then I said that for me Wednesday Wednesday mornings are better because I don't work on Wednesday mornings. Um, but if I teach Monday and Wednesday from eight to nine fifteen, so I could come by like nine. Yeah. Okay. So we can maybe <laughs> maybe try for a later time on a Wednesday morning maybe. Like a 10 a.m. start instead of a 9 a.m. start, maybe? The See problem if, Wednesday yeah. mornings, and I, I don't know how to solve it. We have, already have on the calendar a lot of meetings and commitments on Wednesday mornings. Okay. Now, that's not to say you can't move them. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to move and, me, but I, and we can always rotate who goes to these meetings, right? We <coughs> so it doesn't end up... If people right, I don't take want to time, time off to work. be you right, every single time. But Monday mornings right. are phenomenal for me. 
Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there Monday. Perfect. So if they can't move it around, then I, at least I can, I can show up for these meetings. I know it's tough. I know it's tough because there will be a lot of people in the room. It's tough to get them all kind of locked in because oh, they yeah. all have about eighty other meetings oh, yeah, that, yeah, that go right. on during the week. Yeah, and I don't want to mess with the schedule. <clears> yeah. That many. I mean, um, it has yet to be determined. Um, some colleges have are having their students stay home for yeah. fourteen days. Merrimack has not done that yet, but if they do, then. Um, Harvard's like I know. Yeah, uh, yeah Harvard staff, <laughs> faculty. No they can't travel. Right now. What? I'm so glad I don't work there. Right <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, I would have been the one doing all of this. All of this communication. <laughs> yeah, so, I've, I've been working yeah. on a lot of business continuity plans. <laughs> it's hard the to The food pantry business. meeting tomorrow is at the Korean Church on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Is there somebody I can? email beforehand to say, you know, I can't be there when it starts. Is it okay if I forward her Carrie's email? Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Like, is that legal? <laughs> I will do that right now. Uh, any other concerns or things you think we should have on our radar? Uh, oh, churches. So, looking at the data from South Korea, seems they're very good at putting out everything. So they've got all their epidemiological information, so where the numbers of people who have gotten it at whatever locations, and it seems there that it's mostly hospitals, churches, gyms, and community centers. Uh, and I know the issue right now in New Rochelle in New York was a synagogue. Um, that's where it was uh, spreading. Do we want to have communication to that's a great point. all of the religious <laughs> and hospitals, groups. churches, uh, I mean the gyms, like the Y, yeah. all that kind of stuff, Planet yeah. Fitness, should we outreach and suggest or ask that they post something? Like yeah. is there something they can post that's like wash hands, XYZ, there's you know, watch for three CDs. symptoms. Yeah, there's downloadables on the yeah. CDC site for that that we could point them to. Yeah. Should we do that? Should we ask that they post it? Like when you walk into Planet Fitness, should it say, you know, beware of coronavirus, whatever the CDC recommends mm -hmm. as a posting? They probably already beware have. They probably hands. already have, but it can't hurt. Because, like, I went to the Y this morning, and I didn't see anything oh, yeah. in the front. And it's always packed every yeah. 10 minutes. Like, there's, yeah, like, it's yeah. always packed. <laughs> so there's, you know, people going in and out every yeah. five minutes. And make sure that they're also upping their disinfection. <laughs> they do have well. in the rooms um, just this, the standard thing about, like, washing hands. They have Purell in yeah. all the rooms, but it's not, like, in the front door. And it's not relevant to the current coronavirus, right? Which is what makes people pay attention, right? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a list of those? Because we just Google it. <laughs> is that what we would do to find the gems? Probably. There's only there's we can, only yeah, we keep this like that. There's only the gym and Planet of Fitness. There's nothing else. Gold's closed. Gold's closed. Gold's closed. There's a lot of small gyms. There are a lot of small gyms. Yeah, there's a lot of, small, uh, yeah, a lot of fitness together. Yeah, there's a lot of those. It's probably got, there's probably at least five or six of those. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe like half a dozen. Maybe, like, yeah. yeah maybe you like personal oh, training yeah. studios. Um, Yoga. I, right. You it should be just filed right. somewhere under uh, some kind of business permit, right? We have it like subsections down to. 
like facility type of facility for the business, like restaurant, you know, gym facility. Because the only one that I permit is the Y because of the pool and Planet Fitness because they have tanning. Tanning. Need a permit to operate at the general. So there's got to be a subsection Probably. of the permits that we can pull from. Yeah. They'd need some type of business certificate from yeah. town clerk. Is that who would go through? I think so. What do you think? I just texted the executive director. Yep. He has a, um, instructions for cleaning and protocol, staff and members. This John? Yeah. He used to work for me. They were all over it. At, at the Y. At the Y. Okay. Just not the front door. <laughs> Just not the, or did I somehow not see? <laughs> I know they're in a lot of the little the rooms. Um, and then which are churches. Right. You'll be with the clergy tomorrow, right? Yeah. Is that all? Our I'm meeting with her. all of they're coming to that they're, same meeting. Yeah. Same meeting. Yeah. That's we'll all be okay. together at the same meeting. Mm -hmm. Church. You're talking to all the important <laughs> people. I was going to a food pantry. Okay. Yeah. That's who, that's who runs the food pantry. Yeah. Okay. I mean, one thing I wonder whether people, on the one hand, if we're being directive and saying you have to post this on your front door, then everyone is equal in what we're asking them to do, but we're being very directive there. On the other hand, um, what am I trying to say? Do we anticipate any pushback from people saying, I don't want to scare everyone and have this posting on my front door and have people not wanting to come in because it says maybe there's COVID-19 in building. Do we want to consider any potential pushback? Or do we think? I don't. I wouldn't anticipate that. Yeah, okay. I would really be very surprised. surprised. People are taking it seriously. Yeah. Okay. Just I think ask. most of them are probably <laughs> already out in front already of it. Already doing it, yeah. yeah. Really, like, gyms are membership based generally, so people have already paid. Whether they come or not, they're going to get paid. <laughs> So we have, right. <laughs> have to ask the town clerk, but one of their forms does ask business type when they're applying for a certificate. So, you know, maybe the clerk does have a, an easy list that we can pull from. You looking for a list of gyms? Gyms. Yeah. So not everybody that has a business gets a business license. That's the problem. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Well, um, it's it might be possible to get it through the assessor's office because they would be, I think, in the assessor's database because we tax them on equipment. That's possibly one way. I don't know if they code how they code CIP. Right. But that may be one way to capture it. they have all that equipment and the weights and the machinery and all of that so I'm sure right, right. I'm sure they come up on our CIP list for the assessors sure they would have to right yeah I think so so do we want to reach out to the gyms or are we good with not reaching out to the gyms because she just talked to the Y or we're going for the little ones. No, I generally like to not pick and choose. Um, and yeah, ask everyone. Yeah, to the all in the same category. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of whether we can get a reasonable list. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
town clerk, so I'm like mashing up that one. Yeah. 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 Monday is now from 9 to noon. 9 to noon. <clears throat> Who's there beside? So it's us, it's fire, police, police, schools, police town. Schools. Library, RMLD, Austin Prep, Austin Prep, DPW, um, our operations staff that does the social media, uh, facilities, IT, okay. the um, administrative services director, town clerk, town accountant, um, schools, HR, planning. Community services, town clerk, about 24 people. Thirty with all of you guys. So I think I can complete. So if it's that, that. Yeah. yeah, long. The CDC has all of this stuff about community and faith-based organizations. Oh, they do. Okay. They have everything in here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to recreate. We just nope. need to point just out people. people to these resources. Yep. Yep. So those maybe services. should we add some of those specific links to our website? We have guidance for businesses and employers. Yes. Yeah, so do we want to add the faith-based community and faith-based leaders? Yeah. Add that to the website. They have first responders. They have homeless shelters. Colleges and universities, K through twelve, homework. Yeah, I'd like to you that link, and I'll just attach it right on. Yes, thank you. What is it you're going to add it on? Yeah, to the website. Yeah, is that okay? So it's the landing page, the CDC landing page that has all the different buttons for faith and community leaders, colleges and universities. First responders, healthcare settings. Is that okay? Who are you going to get to do it? Jane. Jane. Sure. I think she's the communications. Jane that one does have a good flyer. This is just a website. This one? So yeah. I'm looking at. This is the website link that I'll I can send to Laura. I mean, like this thing. We're all, I, think I have it on the screen, so why don't you tell me where you are and I'll pull it up. <laughs> uh, oh, is that the same one? It's I'm preventing. Sure. Uh, oh. You want me to just go um, to the CDC? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that down flyer. there. And then he has yeah, a that flyer. Yeah, and this, this Laura, is from what you need to know. Thing. And then she's looking at over here, there's a link preventing COVID 19 spread in communities. Yeah. And then down there, that's got yeah. that whole. K through 12 colleges at work, community and faith based organizations, large events. Not do those. <laughs> so we could send. <laughs> the answer healthcare settings, first responders, and homeless shelters. So we could send the same link out to everyone gyms, churches, all that. If we had their email addresses. <laughs> yeah. Although I do like this one. <laughs> yeah, and so on the fire. I don't know what you should know, just as the whole thing, not at the top. And we can, or, we can post the okay, don't mind. that flyer also to the website. This maybe it's here. Or have it as the. Yep. Is this what you guys are talking about? for employees. Have you seen that flyer? No, but that it's, one's. Maybe not. Oh, no, sorry. Oh. It's the yeah, pretty like one. one. It's like, yeah, it's the pretty one. Like yeah. <laughs> I did see that one too, Jean. I went back to. Oops. Open the new tab here. 
You will send in the whole yeah, link, right? Information for yeah. I think this link that Emmy has. That's the link that yeah. The preventing and then information for. One. And then you click a little bit <laughs> We're further all down in the different yellow places. button. Well, there's, there's a ton of information audiences. on the site. And then there's that flyer. Stop the spread of germs flyer on the left. Yeah. So I like this website. Because that they can get more information from. So she said, um, Jane Mill left Jane Mill, right? Yeah. I'll post it. Okay, perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. So she can send to all those places. Do we need to do so? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Laura asked me about posting something on the town website yeah, that posting. links back to the CDC. Now you're talking about reaching out to the community and doing what? <laughs> Um, sending a link to this web page that, that Laura and Emmy found that has resources for sp by specific sector. Yes. So healthcare audience or j if you own a gym, if you are a, I can't remember. So sending that and then a, this flyer that people can post. So at home, K through 12, at colleges and universities. Um, can we hold off until Monday before we start going off? Because I, I feel like, to, again, coordinating with schools yeah. and everyone that will be in the room yeah. on Monday probably makes the most sense before we... You'll find out what people are doing already. Yeah. Right. right. So, yeah. Since we spent all this time searching, though, should we send links to you for things that we all looked at and think are fine to send? Yes, to have it. I mean, we won't do anything at that just point. Have it, we'll just, just have, have, have readily find. I thought we were yeah. just talking about adding something to the town of Reading website. Is that what we were just talking that's about, right, or am yeah. I delirious? Yeah, yes. I thought that's what no, we that is what we okay. were originally. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So, I wrote down <laughs> add to town website. Yeah. Laura. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. You want me to have Jane Miller do it, right? You're gonna you're gonna take Send the lead it. and coordinate with Jane Miller. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's the preventing spread. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> oh, sorry. Do you want me to go back? Preventing spread. Just like, all right, I'll keep this for Monday. nurse that they offer the position to did decline it right and Jean has an interview with HR Thursday so we we set up the interview Thursday. tomorrow oh, tomorrow, tomorrow sorry and Laura was but invited but she has a conflict so I have the CDC call oh that's kind of important. so rather than reschedule the interview we're going to go forward with it because we're trying to get this position filled so Laura's going to cover the CDC call and I'm going to cover the interview and hopefully be a good mm -hmm. okay. fingers crossed. Yeah. They changed the time. It was supposed to be ten o'clock in the morning. They just sent out an email that they were changing the time to three. Okay. So we're just kind of in a holding pattern until Monday and then just so I'm sort of thinking out loud here about, you know, next steps and we get directions from. <laughs> um, so, if someone who lives in Reading tests positive in a hospital, does the hospital report? Like, does that go in the Maven report? 
And that means you were trying to figure out today because it wasn't around before. If it'll be, I'm assuming it'll be listed separate as its own line item. Okay. I would assume so, yeah. So no matter what hospital they would go to because they reside in Reading, you would get notified. Yeah. Or work for a restaurant in Reading. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. a guess that they're going to put it as a separate light item, but I would think so. I would think so. And they would think they would auto, they would probably reach, the state would, it would go to the state and then the state would automatically probably reach out to the health department okay. rather than waiting for somebody to check Maven is, I assume, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's a big assumption. <laughs> yeah, like they see down here. Yeah. That was not there before. I would think it would be big enough to make your own list. Yeah. There's so many ways to spell the name Carrie. I knew oh. there was no way I could spell it right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not <laughs> probably not the first one you would think. Yeah. Um, and uh, so technically, I think we are the enforcers of quarantine and isolation. Okay. <laughs> I don't really know how that looks. But, um, yeah, it sounds like we would probably take directive from the police chief who's lying. Fire chief, yes. Fire chief, thank you. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that <coughs> they'd come to us with everything. I would think so, yeah. And we can ask that on Monday, too. If anyone gets positive here, they actually follow the advice of their doctor. <laughs> like all these other people who decide they're still going to go to parties after. Don't do that, people, please. <laughs> okay, anything else? Moment. I know. I think more of it is more of the questions so will come up yeah. after Monday. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I don't have a round table item. Does anyone else? <laughs> no. <laughs> Does anyone really want to talk about 2020 goals? It seems <laughs> like it's just forward that one on to the next. I season. sort of think <laughs> it's a lower priority now. Let's like kind of get through our next couple months. Shall we? I don't know. Is everyone else okay with that? Yeah. I actually did Kicking watch, that. I did take in and watch the, yeah, the last meeting that I wasn't able to attend. Oh, good. Um, so kind of about the heard about goals. <laughs> I heard a lot about talking about <laughs> a lot about goals. Yeah. We talked a lot about talking so, about so, you know, my only advice would be when talking about you know, goals, it's, it's wildly different for a board, like the Board of Health, than it is for just about any other board, you know, in, in town. You know, goals is a, is a tough thing for the Board of Health because everything happens at the last second and gets dropped in your lap, right? So, you know, I, I think when talking about the goals, maybe keep more towards the structure of how the board's set up um, within the town and what they're supposed to be doing, how they're responding to things, you know, rather than trying to pick what, you know, topics out of the year that you want to hit up. Those are things you can always just, those don't have to be goals. Those can come up as, as they come up. You know, the goal should be, how do we respond to this? How do we, you know, so more of a kind of a structural background rather than implementation kind of a, a policy or regulation. You know, those are things that are going to kind of come up in, in, the board will deal with them as they do. So that, that'd be my only two cents from regards to talking about goals, so. Yes. But I'm fine when, again, you know, moving everything to another discussion night. <laughs> okay, 
So just since I wasn't here last week, I figured yeah, you might no, just no, no, but yeah, <laughs> well, it's good to have. So I'm thinking more about process too, rather than specific help. Yeah, process. Yeah, I, I think that's more of feels like to me that's something that's more in line with what a board of health should be working on, right? How how are we implementing how the betterment for the, the health of all the residents here in Reading? You know, how do we how do we do that rather than what we do? If that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. The what can come up whenever it wants to. <laughs> I don't know you have to make you know what a goal, but how is certainly something that you know would be um, good to put down and say this is how we want to do this, this is how we want to do that. Um, when events occur, this is how we want to handle COVID nineteen uh, yeah. when it pops up. You know, um, so I think things like that, even so, you know, making sure that we do have representation at these. Uh, emergency, emergency preparedness meetings, you know, that's a goal, right? Let's let's make sure we have a lot of ears uh, and eyes in those rooms. Stuff like that. So that'd be my uh, two cents on it all. Yeah, I think in general, I don't think we've mentioned this in the last, it seems like it's so long ago <laughs> somehow. Um, but yeah, emergency planning policies written out for a variety of scenarios and that the open-ended scenarios as well just right. as like guidance okay first you do this then you do this sure um, yeah absolutely those sorts of things i think would definitely be very useful definitely yep all right anyone have anything else yes. no we'll no. have a lot more after monday i'm sure uh, yeah, do you think we should uh, call a meeting? Our meetings, or no. probably. A... <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we? Um, you're going to be there Monday as well too. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we you can all, you can, you can always meeting. call one right. as the chair. You can always call a meeting within 48 hours. I mean. Would probably wouldn't be a bad idea after that meeting to discuss sort of what we can. I'm sure there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can't discuss with the public. I'd assume you know, some degree of um, police fire uh, emergency responses. I assume there's something that not everything probably, would be public. That's probably a question for Monday. Yeah. What can we and can we not talk about? Well, I'm just, I'm just saying from a tactical standpoint. Except for those those houses and those facilities that town council advises us to be very careful about because they're protected. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of anything else that would be confidential. Should we call one debrief meeting after the Monday meeting to have some time to be able to discuss at the board? Or do we want to decide after the meeting on Monday whether or not to plan that? I think I saw a thumbs up up there. A what? <laughs> Did, um, didn't you say Emmy's going to write a short summary and give it to Laura and Laura will share it with I the think rest now of it sounds like well, yeah, a lot now of I can, be I think, I, yeah. I oh, think everybody's I can, going? If I can go late. If it's going to be on till 12, then I can just cancel office hours. Tell my students I'm learning about public health for them. <laughs> yeah, my guess would be the only reason why we'd have to meet is to actually vote on something. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I mean, we won't we know that. We don't know that tonight, but we'll, we'd have anything. If we'd have to make a decision on something. Will you be posted? Right. We'll be posted well, we'll for post it that. in the meeting, actually, yeah. yeah. That'll be posted as a meeting that. Right. Monday, Monday meeting will be posted we'll as be a meeting. Posted meeting so. so I guess we could always just at, immediately after the meeting. Well, I teach at 1230. Oh, yeah. in North so North. no. <laughs> we can act right <laughs> in the meeting. Oh, oh, I see. Wait, I, I, okay. Sure. Yeah, we're posted. Okay. Which then means it has to be open to the public. Oh. It's in the police station community room, so. So then there's nothing that there's going to be proprietary information no. in there from the police or fire or anything like that, or facilities. Okay. Yeah. Any 
the so facilities, we needed to activate back then. Facilities has a very much ramped up plan for, you know, treating the surfaces and all of that. There's specific cleaners they're using. They've intensified the amount of cleaning. I just had a quick check-in with um, the facilities director today. So um, at the meeting, I think they passed out some information um, about the technical cleaning. Did you get this? Okay. So um, it, it's uh, part of their the data sheet. I want that clean using to clean. Yep. So we're all working together. Motion to approve the, uh, let's see, where are we at? I'm looking at the wrong one. Motion to approve <laughs> the February 18th, 2020 uh, meeting of the Board of Health. Second. All in favor? Three zero, motion passes. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Three zero, motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Great, thanks everyone.